Hey, everybody. The world is sick and getting sicker. Did you guys hear about the $18 million worth of cocaine found in that house in New Jersey yesterday? Did you see it all lined up? It was all compressed. It was like, oh, gosh, I forgot how many pounds they said it was, but it was well, $18 million worth of cocaine. So you can imagine, in one house on a suburban street, and the neighbors were commenting like they never realized anything like that was going on. They were outraged. There are children playing in the streets, and it's, you know, suburbia. And there were two Spanish men who happened to live in the house, two um, men of Spanish descent, I don't know, Dominican, Puerto Rican, whatever. Uh, but the coke was coming, of course, from Colombia. And, and I just found that to be like... Wow. Imagine if that was going on right next to you. I mean, not just any old dealer, but a kingpin. Can you imagine all the AK-47 shooting that could have been going on at that house if something ever went wrong? All the bad... Just wow. And then, of course, by now, we've all heard about the um, nine-year-old girl who stabbed her seven-year-old friend over a rubber ball. The nine-year-old girl, that didn't look like nine to me, didn't she? Did you see her on the news? She looks quite mature. Um, Just terrible, terrible. And then yesterday in Florida, a seven-year-old girl killed her seven-month-old sibling, kicking and beating him with a two-by-four because he, the seven-year-old boy, I'm sorry if I referred as a girl, was jealous of all the attention that the new baby was getting. And the baby wouldn't stop crying. Just a lot going on. All right, um, we're going to bring our bachelorettes in. And, yeah, I got to tell you, there were, sp- there were supposed to be three finalists. There were actually only two here. One wasn't able to leave work, so now she's out of the competition as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, that's that's my executive decision because this is the day Carlos is here. This is the day it's going down. You can open the door. This is the day Carlos is like, oh, hey, ladies. Oh, Carlos going to have a hard time. Okay, wait, that's the microphone you all are using. Um, you can just lift it up right there in front of you. Yep, you can just lift it up just a bit. Uh, all right, so now who's all whose name? What's your name? I'm Robin Edwards. You're the doctor. I'm in the DR. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're the DR period. Much respect, DR period. Your hair was curled around yeah, in your picture. Different. And you? Soraya. Very nice to meet you, Soraya. Mm-hmm. She's in her um, DVF wrap dress. Mm-hmm. I know Diane von Furstenberg. Whenever I got to do something and I want to be sure that I look nice with no question, I pull out my DVF, as Absolutely. do you, I say. Oh, I brought this for you, when you just... That Thank you. Thank you for all the support. Oh, you're very <laughs> welcome. All right, so, uh, girl, oops, I'm sorry. Um, so, ladies, step up to the microphone because I wanted to kind of introduce you both to the listeners, and then and then you'll quickly just go back to the office. I like your Gucci bag. Both of you ladies are very well appointed. <laughs> Thank you. How old are you, girls? Refresh, refresh. <laughs> I'm 35 that's years the, old. That's the doc. And I'm 29. Now, Soraya, what do you do for a living? I'm a marketing manager. I work in footwear. Okay. Oh, she got a big mouth, too. Mm-hmm. She, yeah, that voice projects. <laughs> and and where did each of you um, go to school? Doc? I went to Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, and Georgetown School of Medicine for medical school. Okay. Mm-hmm. And? And I went to school here in New York. I graduated from Hunter. Okay. And now you're both single as I don't know what. Yes. And do do either one of you have children? No, no. children. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. And so, if you were animals, what animal would you be? Uh, Soraya, I would be a jaguar. Okay, Doc. I would be probably a gazelle. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> wow. For the elegance and grace it's, and beauty. It's still hard to decide. <laughs> it's hard. To, is this the third bachelorette she actually got off work? Ebony. Oh, Ebony Magazine's here. Hey, Eb. Hey. How you doing? Hi, All right. I'm so glad that we were able to team up with you guys, by the way, for this contest. Yeah, we're like, Wendy, we got to do it with Wendy. Yeah, I find yeah. Um, Carlos <laughs> tragically single. Like, and I, and I mean that in the best way. Because, um, how old is Carlos? 33 or 35? I can't even remember. 35. 35. 35. Uh, to be 35 and to be a political analyst on CNN, well-versed, well-educated, Good, fine, <laughs> and and single. It's like, that's this is you guys' dream. Yeah, and it's the, tough for all of us. It is tough. Very tough. Yes. I'll tell you what makes it easier for you two ladies right now. The third broad couldn't get off work. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? So yeah, it's well, just the two of you. Yeah, well, exactly. she's busy. And whichever one of you Carlos doesn't pick today, I can tell you the Harlem Club is having their soiree tonight. Yes. I heard that. Well, Are you guys down with something like that? Definitely. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have the address. We can, you know, you can go over there and check out what's going on tonight. Why not? Mm -hmm. The Harlem Club. So what's the closest either, what's the longest relationship um, either of you, both of you have been in? Uh, mine was... Four years. Okay, that's the... Soraya. That's, so, so my, I have a very good friend named Zoraya. So I want to be called... The, yeah, Soraya. And Doc? Five years. Five years. Mm -hmm. now, do you, now, for the four years, uh, Soraya, were you ever engaged, living together? Was there promise of ma marriage or intent of marriage? No, he pretty much just wanted to play house. And, you know, I wasn't into that. Yeah, so. I got you. Yeah. I got you. And Doc? He, I, he was my boyfriend in medical school. So oh. we were students together. Yeah. So studying late night. You know how that is. <laughs> yeah. Now, did he go on and get married? He did. Soraya, did yours? Yeah, he actually married the woman. Um, he cheated on you, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? I yeah. was just making that up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? The jump off always gets the ring. But it's fine because she's like miserable at home and according to him. But, you yeah. know, men lie. But, uh, according to him, he's still in touch with you. Oh, he's the, trying guy, the guy is like flowers, you know, phone calls. But luckily for me, I have caller ID, so I pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So tacky. So do either one of you uh, have cats? I have a dog. Okay. I have no pets. All right. Mm -hmm. What? Okay, if you were a car, what would you be? Ooh. Um, once again, a Jaguar. It's my favorite car. Okay. Wow. Convertible. Do you have a Jaguar? Actually, no. I have the train. I take the train. Okay. You live in the city? I do. I live in Harlem. Got gotcha. you. Doc? I'll be a Porsche. Oh, I hear that. I hear that. Well, um, I wish both of you ladies good luck. Thank you. Now, you're going to go back in the office okay. and have, you know, light conversation with Carlos. And then he's going to come in here in about a half hour and he's going to reveal in here which one of you he wants to date. Now, you'll remember Ebony has done this uh, in the past with their bachelor, um, uh, eligible bachelor issue. And last year's bachelor, Ebony, is it correct that they went on? And, huh? Two years. Two years. Two years ago? years ago, we had a bachelor who got married, and they have a two-month-old now. Wow. A DC bachelor, actually. Wow, a DC bachelor. Yep. Well, so I we're wish, good at this. I wish you... Oh. Why should Carl... Thank you. I was just giving this question. Well, I would imagine it's because they think they're the bomb. And, they, and everybody is in their own right. Now, Soraya, why should Carlos pick you? Um, I think Carlos should pick me because I'm fun-loving, um, I'm intriguing, I'm fun to be with, and I love to travel, and I like to try new things. Oh, are those implants? Oh, no. These are so natural. They look good. Thank you. They look very firm. Thank you. Doc, why should Carlos pick you? If he wants quality and wants to be stimulated on all levels, physically, intellectually, oh. and spiritually, I'm his woman. Soraya is a toe-a-toe? -a -toe? Absolutely. Oh! Oh. Doc, is, is it toe-a-toe? -toe? Yes. Oh. <laughs> this is not for Carlos. This is just in general, and I've gotten over this. My answer is absolutely not. Does it make you a whore if you have sex on the first date? I think that um, it really depends on the flow of the evening. I mean, if it feels right, time really doesn't matter. This is Soraya. Doc? I just say live in the moment. Yeah, Doc. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Time is of the essence. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And we're not getting any younger. <laughs> or thinner. Oh, <laughs> hello. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I wish both of you luck. And don't forget that it's only between the two of you and there's the Harlem Club. They're having their grand opening tonight. Okay. So, um, and by the way, the grand opening, um, I think that this is the attire for the grand opening that each of you are wearing. The doctor's wearing a, um, um, a, a camel color, a beige um, suede and, and, and leather ensemble with the turquoise beads. And Soraya has on her Diane von Furstenberg wrap dress, perfect for all occasions. Yes. The doctor has um, shoulder length hair, relaxed. It looks natural, even if it's a weave. It's a couple of, to finish off the ends, is that a little bit of weave hair? Okay. And then Soraya is absolutely natural, her hair. It's um, curly and texturized, not with a perm. 
and both girls are about the same height, and Soraya is a little smaller than the doctor. The doctor, what are you, size 12? Mm hmm Okay. Soraya, you're a size 6, 4. Okay, gotcha. And, and both girls are delicious, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud. We, we chose well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Thank you. So, so you all go in the back room <laughs> and, and talk it up with uh, Carlos. Okay. By the way, girls, do you find Carlos to be fine? And very nice. And very sweet. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a threesome. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, either one who doesn't get go with Carlos, does anybody right. care to go out with her? Nice looking. <laughs> <laughs> no <comment>. <laughs> 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 you can take Carlos's leftovers. He's adorable. Yeah. Always oh, the bridesmaid, never the bride. All right, thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. We're gonna go back. Nice to meet you. Hey, uh, you guys in the office, turn the, uh, the turn the radio down now, because um, we want to do some talking in here and some gossiping, and I don't want the radio to get in the way of their conversation. This is a very intense moment. Yes. All right. When you do real good with picking. I told you I wanted to be serious about it. I know, but you do really well with this kind of thing. You know why? Because I, you know, I, I have a bit of man in me. And. But, wow, I mean, the way you just picked them, you picked winners. Well. Well. I mean. <laughs> the on button. The on button, please. <laughs> uh, Trev Holly. Oh, I know what I'd like. <laughs> Just the strength on it. I do so well. <laughs> Truth be told, Soraya looked like my ex-wife. Facially, my ex-wife had a different kind of hair. It was longer, but that was my look. It couldn't keep me straight, but... <laughs> 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 we did have 11 years together and three fabulous children. What are you crazy? Mm. Daryl looks more like Carlos, though. <laughs> And I do have to say, I love me some girl. Girl. <laughs> How you doing? I gotta go because I'm going back there to look at Carlos. Damn. Oh, no. She know Daryl. It's not Daryl, it's Daryl. Oh, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> like it runs with a girl. Right, right. <laughs> oh, boy. Which one would you pick? Uh, they don't have the radio on in there. The one that the uh, first, the short hair one. Yeah, that would be a Soraya. Yeah, oh, hands down. Okay. Hollywood, which one would you pick? I like both of them. Yeah. Shakira, if you were a lesbian, which one would you pick? <laughs> Soraya. Oh, 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 that was very quick in the answer. I put her tongue out too. <laughs> and she got her and she got her um Queen Latifah um beatdown braids in. She just came back from vacation all tan. Um, Kara, which one would you pick? Soraya. You'd pick Soraya too. What about you, Queen? Wait a minute. Who would the Queen pick? <laughs> Not for Carlos, but for you, viewers. How you do it? Well, <laughs> Soraya's my type of girl. There you go. I pick Soraya. Yeah. Yeah, I pick Soraya. Yeah. You know, she had a bit of aggression with her, so yeah. you know. When I get all, you know, all on my high horse, she'd be able to, you know. Yeah. You heard her voice. Yeah. Her voice was clearly like, you know. I mean, if you don't want to, if you don't want a feisty broad, then tell her to put that player back there. But she seemed a bit feisty. Yeah. You know, she's not gonna. You're not gonna ask her, "What do you want to go for dinner?" And then she gives you. Oh. Yeah. yeah say. <laughs> All right. I only have one ear, though. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. You get the full effect. Exactly. <laughs> And the painkillers are starting to wear off, and so my ears are starting to sting just a little bit, doctor. But I'll be okay. Dr. Jones, who uh, fixed my ear holes earlier. I had plastic surgery earlier today, my colonic, and I went shopping, and now I'm working my job. Superwoman. <laughs> Everybody keep it here. Hi. My boyfriend gave himself a web Susie or whatever. He said he almost burnt his off. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. Dr. Robin, one of the bachelorettes, she... um. 
gave me Angel by Tyree Mugler. Or Thyri Mugler. I've never taken the time to pronounce the man's name correctly. I don't even know. All I know is I love the angel fragrance. Thank you, Dr. Robin Edwards. She can't hear me because, of course, they're sitting in the office with the radio turned down. So um, both ladies are, are in there talking to Carlos. Now, um, Art, you went back there to spy and see what all is going on. Which one does it look like Carlos is going to pick? Um, Soraya. Soraya, the, the shoe um, expert, expert. Yeah. Dr. Robin is a catch, though. Both of the women are catch. They are. Catches. Yeah. And both of them think a toe is a toe. All right. <laughs> In the meantime, everybody, it's 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Soul. You know what I told you guys I was going to tell you uh, last hour about the open casting call? Okay, you ready? All righty, then. There's an agency called Shirley Grant Talent Search, and you can go to them at ShirleyGrant.com. Um, and they are, have an open casting call that is going to be held for people of all ages. Children, teens, young adults, adults. They are searching for talent for commercials, film, TV, Broadway, radio, and models. The talent search is going to be Sunday, June 12th at 1030 a.m., until 4 p.m. I'm about to give you the address, but also I'm going to give you the website again. Apparently, this is not um, necessarily directed for one specific job. This is probably a woman who's, um, whose stable is a little thinner than she would like it to be. Her, their stable of talent. And she's trying to judge up her talent. That's it. So, but listen, if you're sitting at home right now on the couch and you are an aspiring commercial film, TV, Broadway, radio model person, then you might as well get on it. It's going to be at the Marriott at Glen Point, um, which is at 100 Frank W. Burr Boulevard in Teaneck, New Jersey. Okay, you must bring picture. They say come prepared with a 30-second commercial, a one-minute monologue, and 16 bars of a song to sing a cappella. Wow. It's or. Or either one of them things. Or? Yeah, it's like one of those three things. Okay. Well, if you really want to be the triple threat, you come with all three. There you go. And don't just get signed to Shirley Grant Modeling, but, you know, become her premier client by being talented at everything. Uh, no admission and no registration fee. She's not looking for your money. So this, as far as I'm concerned, is on the up and up just because she's not looking for money. Which represents Rudy from the Cosby Show. She does represent Rudy? Yeah, and the girl who's the voice for Dora the Explorer. Oh, the, okay. So she represents Dora the Explorer and she represents Rudy from the Cosby Show and she could represent you. So write, write this address down one more time. Sunday, June 12th, 1030 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Marriott Glen Point Hotel in Teaneck, New Jersey. It's the Shirley Grant Management, and they're holding an open casting call for people of all ages. Grandma, you know you want your 15 minutes of fame. You can go, too, and so can your baby. They're looking for children, teens, young adults, and adults. So, good luck on Sunday, June 12th. For more information, go to her website, www.shirleygrant.com. Shirley Grant Management. That's who that is. Tonight, the place to be is Lounge 42 with Mark Jordan up in uh, Mount Vernon. And don't forget to join a WBLS at the Shadow tonight as well. It is the first Friday of the month. DJ Sugar Daddy's going to be doing it up. And Carl Thomas is going to be live on stage. It's Carl Thomas on the Big Shadow stage. It's going to be jam-packed. It's going to be nice. What is it, snowing outside? What is it, raining so hard it looks like it's snowing? Or is that smog and gunk? Ooh. Detox, detox, detox. Oh, it's supposed to be a nice weekend, though. So anyway, um, Chuck Chill Out is going to be at the Shadow tomorrow night, by the way. So the Shadow's got it going on all weekend long. And um, happy weekend to you all. So do you have my request for Diana Ross? Yeah, what number did you say? Um, I want to hear the boss. So you have to look at the album cover. Oh, here it is. It's, um... Oh, gosh. Who are you? Are? Number 12. The boss. All right. Thank you very much. It's 107.5 WBLS. Oh. Expect great things. Wendy Williams. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. 
Wendy Williams. Experience, 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 experience. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Wendy Williams and Suge Knight. So how do you feel about people uh, still looking at you as the cause of Biggie's death? Tupac's death. For somebody to say I had anything to do with both of those deaths is actually really crazy. There's got to be a lot of jealousy, though, because, you know, I'm my own man. I do my own thing. I don't I don't bother nobody, but I don't run for no right. And the thing is, for us, Pac, everybody knew how I felt about Pac. Everybody knew how Pac felt about me. We got him. This is it right here. <laughs> Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> Hey, 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 everybody. So Dave Chappelle has surfaced in Los Angeles. He told jokes at a comedy club on Wednesday night. He just landed at the airport. He felt like performing, so he just showed up at a comedy club. Just a joking and a ha, ha, ha. Oh, wait, here's Carlos. Let's take a moment, because I really do have to get back to the gospel. I want to tell you something about Suge Knight and Bill Cosby. And what's a hi, Carlos? Hey, Wendy. I just belched. I ate tuna fish. Mwah. Excuse me, you're all in the zone. Ooh, uh, hi. hi. Okay, Carlos. We're going to take a moment to find out. First of all, uh, talk in the mic. Hello, hello. Is this mic on? This one. Okay, Carlos Watson. Everybody is um, an Ebony eligible bachelor. He was voted People Magazine uh, 2004 one of the most beautiful people in the world. Um, he has a show that comes on Friday nights on CNN. Your show is live, isn't it? At uh, five o'clock, I'm gonna leave right here and go go do some work. Go do work. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What time does your show come on? We do. I do a segment. Okay. Uh, every Friday, usually at about five forty-five. Five forty-five on CNN. And Sundays at six. And he's a political analyst. Yeah. And he's a man of about town, mm -hmm. he's highly educated, mm -hmm. highly motivated, mm -hmm. and very single. No, very single. No children, never been engaged, mm -hmm. no STDs. <laughs> and to me, you're, all that is true. To me, you're a cross between Denzel, Ahmad Rashad, and let me just throw somebody else in here. Who was Rudy's boyfriend's name on the Cosby Show? Bud. Bud. <laughs> <laughs> and Bud, and Bud. But see, you know what happens when when you say all those nice things. You know what? You know what happens? You get dates. No, no. I end up wanting to say, why can't I date Wendy Williams? I'm married. I know. Okay. So, in a nutshell, there are two fabulous women in the other room. There's Soraya, and there's Dr. Robin. Dr. Robin, by the way, thank you so... They, they have the radio up at this point. Dr. Robin, thank you so much for my angel um, fragrances. You know I love these. You are a class act. By the way, what do you think about the Harlem Club? Do you know all about it? Have they ever asked you to? Uh -uh. They never asked you to be a part. Uh -uh. Say more about it. What is it? <laughs> well, I, know, I know you said they've got something going on tonight. Yeah, pass me my article. Pass me my article real quick. I want to describe uh, to you what they want in women. Oh. It, first of all, it's a group of men, much like yourself, right. highly educated, nicely paid. Tragically single, or so they say. I think these are married men. They want to work this as a brothel, but whatever. <laughs> okay. They say the ladies have to be pretty, in shape, single, no children, but be under 35 and ensure fertility and boast a bachelor's degree. What do you think about That's not a real club. You see? Yes, it is. It's called the Harlem Club. Look, here's the address. Whichever girl doesn't win, I would love for her to go there tonight and be able to They're just getting right to it. They get right to it. A lot of the bachelors, let me tell you what the bachelors say. Yeah. Bachelors say, look, we work hard and our time to party and socialize is very few. As he takes a sip of the Zinfandel there at the club located on Madison Avenue. It's a brown... Oh, they actually, actually have a location? Yeah. Brown industrial furniture and used hotel lobby furniture. That's what they diss and say in the, in the newspaper. <laughs> he goes on to say, but now women of color have the opportunity to meet brothers. Mm -hmm. Another man who's 40 says, you just come to a point when you want to cut to the chase, says a 40-year-old Wall Street trader who earns a six-figure salary and is ready to settle down. We all know why we're here. All right, so I can hear that because you are busy, yeah. right? And most of these people, if they're like myself at all, I can legitimately say I work seven days a week. Yeah. And... Um, more often than I'd like to admit, I'm working 16 hours a day. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so I can see that. 
Like yeah. to see that you get busy enough that it's hard to meet people, hard to meet quality people. Well, here's a sample of the girls in the newspaper right here. Is that is that what you like? A nice Asian girl with overbleached hair, <laughs> or or a black girl with an easy picking shirt on? I mean, is that is that you? You know, what, I got to say, and, I got to say, you ask the best questions because I love those questions you were asking the Bachelorette. But listen, but to stick up for the ladies, yeah. is this really what you want to meet? A man? A how you doing, man? The, now, you, you, know, you, know, you know what the truth of the matter is? What? This can't be what the Harlem Club's about. I'm hoping that this was just a stage picture. That can't be what this they're about. This is their representation. If you took a picture from the newspaper, wouldn't that... They, other you, words, you, know what, you know what? They need to get a publicist like mine. Yeah. Darlene. Yeah. Hi, Darlene. Gillard Jones. Hi, Darlene rhymes with guillotine. Has she whispered <laughs> in your ear and told you who you, who you should pick today? I think I know. Okay, let's do it. Drum roll, please. Okay. Okay, we've got the fabulous Soraya, and we've got the equally fabulous Dr. Period Robin. I mean, this is tough, and I'm not just saying that because that's what you're supposed to say. This is this is tough. You would have had a third choice, but she couldn't get off work. You, there's a part of me that wishes I could say yes to both, that I could like change the rules, and just say yes to both. Yes, but you can't. I can't. No. That's why I paused. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Are you gonna help me out? Yeah. Art already said who he picked. Now, and we're not we're not talking about loss. Two incredibly wonderful women, and I think. Hey, Negro, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know whichever one you don't pick, the other one's going up to the Harlem Club tonight. Or hanging with me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to choose Soraya. Okay. Well, They're congratulations, Soraya. And. Um, and they both believe in sex on the first date, oh. not because they're whores, but because we're that's, a all good, busy. that's a good, healthy thing. We're all busy people, and and we're all mature people, and understand that hoedom is not just because you have sex on the first date. Agree. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's a good thing. So we want you to be in touch and just tell us like what you did on your first date and all like that. I don't know when the first date will be. You're busy. You're gonna have to, you yeah. know, exchange BlackBerry information oh, or whatever. Tonight. Oh, you're going out tonight. I'm going out tonight. Oh, Wow, the limo's going to pick you up? Mm -hmm. Going to a very nice place. It's just she have to get out of her Diane von Furstenberg wrap dress and get into something else? Uh-uh. You like well, that? Well, it depends. Oh! Wow. Oh, oh. Oh. Wow. Oh. Wow. Well, you know, wow. to work. We're going to the Hudson for champagne. <laughs> the Hudson for champagne. While he goes to work across the street. Oh, so you're going to be, as the publicist, you're going to be with her at the Hudson for champagne. Right. She'll be nicely lubed when you get off work. <laughs> Nice. See, but I like the way you think. You you understand, but you don't have any brothers. Though. But you I am busy sister. also, and I I understand. I could put myself in the mentality mm -hmm. of you got to cut to the chase. Kind of do, but not on the Harlem Club kind of way. But just in the no, I'm, you know, I'm gonna way. hope for the Harlem Club that this isn't the real representation. Well, Maybe I, it is, but I'm gonna hope it wasn't. I wish you well. Um, I want to find out all about it after. You want me to come back and tell you? About have, it? Well, or something. Okay, or something. All right. Um, we have a minute left on the break, so scoot, scoot, scoot. <laughs> have fun. Bye. Bye. Well, yeah. congratulations, Soraya. Thank you, Dr. Robin, for coming. Yeah. Dr. Robin, we're keeping you on our file, though, because you know what? I, I got to tell you, Carlos, we had lots of very eligible women. It was tough, even from our perspective. Go. You keep acting like you're going to lamp in the cut. Go. <laughs> Send the doctor back here. You all um, <laughs> keep it here. We gossip and whatnot and round out the last hour next. Everybody be good. Bye. Bye. Wendy, man. Presently, my um, husband just got discharged from the military. But now he's home, and I just want to tell him to get the f*** out. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> Mr. Engineer, please, some music. Would you please, would you give us a record, por favor? Hey, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Here's a fact somebody wanted to know is Soraya Latina. Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. She looked just like my cousin Donna Seymour, so I, I don't know. Donna's black. Soraya looked Latina, but then again, so does Donna. Was Soraya uh, black? The name Soraya is, I don't know. If she could be black and it's one of them names, or she could be Latina and it's a name from the old country or island or whatever. I don't know, she was a woman of color. I mean, 
we didn't do the dating for Carlos based on, you know, black, white, you know, all like that. You know, he said he'd date anybody. We even included... Um, and now already down to women with kids and whatnot. Anyway, uh, let's move on. They're going on their date tonight. Bully, bully for them. Great. So, apparently a paid informant told the police back in the day that Suge Knight and a dirty cop orchestrated the killing of Biggie. Well, that paid informant has since stepped forward and admitted that the most of what he told the LAPD and the FBI was hearsay. Ooh. Also, um, Bill Cosby um, apparently was trying to get a gag order yesterday for the sexual assault suit brought against him in March. The judge said, no, no gag order. Let everybody talk. <gasps> That's a real slap in the face, right? And Jennifer Lopez, we must congratulate La Lopez. She's celebrating her one year anniversary today. Wow, Jen, look at you. Are you already? Well, she's been married to Mark Anthony for a year. That's quick. I mean, I haven't really been following it, but that's what the wags are saying. Doesn't it seem like she just married Mark Anthony six months ago? It's been a year. Congratulations, uh, Jen. Madonna just signed a $9.5 million deal to launch her own perfume. It's called... Well, I don't know, but her new CD that, that she's working on is called Defying Gravity. I don't like that name. I mean, we know, but we don't need to be reminded, you know. Um, but she's following in the steps of Jennifer Lopez, who we were just talking about, and so many other people. Um, the perfume and the album are both going to be simultaneously hitting stores in November, just in time for Christmas shopping. Why doesn't she call the perfume... Kabbalah or something. Anyway, um, I'm going to be on a current affair tonight. Now, you'll have to check your local listings. and you It comes on Fox 5 here on the East Coast uh, in most cities at 6.30. Then the same show will repeat on Monday because I know I watch a current affair. I never catch it at 6.30. I'm always working, but I catch it at 12 noon. The repeat of the day before. So the day before would actually be today's show, but on Monday. Um, but check your local listings. Uh, yeah, A Current Affair is back. And um, they wanted to talk with me about Christian Slater. So I said, bring it on. It all happened yesterday. Um, I got the call while I was actually on the radio show. I was literally applying makeup and judging my hair while they were like walking down the hall to be on like I can't turn away a moment because like I was telling you guys yesterday what makes me think that I'm going to be hot enough for them to come back next week tell them I'm not available today <sighs> my makeup artist isn't here my hair is half done I'll do it next week you know what I'm saying here today going tomorrow I so believe that so I was like, bring on them. And I have a breakout above my mouth. So I was like, bring on the cameras. We can do the talk. So with Christian Slater, the latest, because I didn't know this. This is like late breaking as of today. Yeah. Unfortunately, the taping that I did was for yesterday. And it's good. But it leaves out that this 52-year-old woman who is accusing Christian Slater, the actor, of groping her behind went to her co-workers at her drug treatment center where she works and was telling them allegedly that Christian and she were partying at the same bar where he was a, a, where he's a regular at the bar and well liked and he briefly grabbed her butt after a long kissing ses session with his girlfriend in the meantime the story that I got is that they were inside the bodega and he was fighting with his girlfriend, and he grabbed her butt over by the soda, and then she went outside and dialed 911. Well, the strippers community is talking right now, saying he's a gentleman, not a groper, blah, 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 so on and so forth. I don't know. He's got such a dirty, seedy past. I believe anything. And most of all, I believe that this is great business for this play that he's in town promoting. But, oh, look, here comes Harris down the hall. Harris Faulkner is here from A Current Affair. We're going to have a brief. Um, all right, Harris, have a seat. Hey. 
All right. So first of all, you know, I'm very, very curious about what you have coming up in June because I understand it is the year of Wendy. Oh, yeah. June 28th, my new CD. The Wendy Williams Brings the Heat compilation CD. And it's volume one. If people love it, hopefully there'll be a volume two. Um, I think that there's something on it for everyone. Um, from 17 songs, the right? 17 songs, including most all of my favorite people, um, Jadakiss and Jaheem and Nas and Amarie and Gorilla Black. And all the radio stations you're syndicated to? Everybody. Y- yeah, the radio stations. I just added a new radio station in New Orleans, Q93. So that's my second one in Louisiana. My third Louisiana Congrats. station gets added next week. So we'll own that state. Um, this year, I've, I've gotten Los Angeles. I'm on at 100.3 The Beat. And, you know, it's it's a slow grind, but it's so well worth it, you know. Um, most radio stations that do syndication syndicate morning shows. Um, while mornings is always an option that... And not a lot of women of color. And, and that also, you know, uh, but... I, I have a certain lifestyle that I, I'm not waking up anymore at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> not if I can help it. I mean, if you not put without it, a fire drill, exactly. So, so I elect to be in the afternoons. So, because of that, you know, it's a, it's a slower roll, but. I got all kinds of support here. Well, congrats! Now you watch the show, A Current Affair. Love it. Okay, we're back. I know we're back. Zoom. You got it. Control. Love it. Right. Okay. Fox Five weeknights at six thirty. Six thirty. And you kind of know what we're about, right? Yep. All right. So you've been hearing about the story with Christian Slater. And yes. Because I heard you talking about it on the radio. Yeah, I was going to say I've been hearing about it and reporting about it. So I want to know what you think. I believe it. At first, believe it or not, I said, okay, this is an opportunist who already knows that Christian Slater's a Probably bad boy. Probably young. Probably a young girl. It was something like 2 o'clock in the morning. He was drinking, his girlfriend was probably drinking, and so was the woman with the behind rope. She was probably drinking too. She wants her 15 minutes of fame. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then when I found out that the woman was 52, I said, well, I believe the story. Isn't that something how an age will change your perception of something? So why do you believe it because she's 52? Well, unless she's 52 and looks like uh, Cher. <laughs> you know, in which case I'm I'm back to oh she's making up a story, but uh, you know I don't know there's 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 something about every 23 year old girl now wanting to have a moment like Paris Hilton, or at least a moment, and the culture that we live in right now is giving everybody a moment. Mm-hmm. I don't think a 52 year old woman is chasing her moment in the sun, you know, in the headlines. So now you've been talking somewhat too on your show about Christian's recent coming to town because you you didn't even know why he was in town i had no idea and then i and then i um read in the headlines uh because i was curious about what the hell is he up to now because he's a bad boy first an actor second but But you like bad boys i love bad boys and they're good for the business here but i can tell you um the glass menagerie is on broadway i had no idea that he was a part of it then again i don't frequent broadway plays but then again, so do a lot of people didn't know why why he was in town. This is good business for the play. Um, as long as he's not doing jail time, he's free to continue to do the play. This comes off the heels of him at, trying to cop some Cialis, the sexual performance drug, uh, in the bathroom stall of the club a couple of weeks ago. And why do I believe this story? Aside from the woman's age... He's done it to himself because he's got a trail of bad behavior, including drug abuse, alcohol abuse, a few weeks in jail, beating up his girlfriend. But those things seem to be so much more serious than this. Do you take this one seriously? No. No, not at all. You think it's a frivolous thing? Even if it happened? I think it's frivolous even if it happened, but we need frivolity in our lives. You know, yeah, you said this is good for your business. This is good for my business. This is good for the play because it's not serious. He didn't stab anyone. He didn't rape anyone. And he didn't beat up his girlfriend. He wasn't trying to cop cocaine. He was trying to cop Cialis. He didn't rape this woman. He touched her behind. You know what I think is interesting, too? Do you remember last week a criminal court judge in New York City ruled that this sort of thing is not a crime. Remember the guy who was working in a store and he hit the woman on the behind a couple of times? I well, do that remember that. ended up in court, Judge Weinberg's case. 
And he ruled, nah, there's got to be something going on a little bit more than that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's interesting that a week later now we're talking about Christian Slater with this. Well, we also live in a very litigious society. This woman ran outside and got the cop and, you know, told on Christian. I mean, if that were to happen to you, honestly. At 52, if a 35-year-old man did that, I think, well, I don't know, maybe I'd be happy. I'm not really sure. Listen, the point is, is that you wouldn't call the cops. Well, but she didn't just call the cops. She dialed 911. Yeah. Yeah. 911. That's a real emergency. Yeah. Where's and how do you explain that? I mean, what do you say on the 911 call? We've tried to get the tapes, but they've been subpoenaed for court, which, by the way, is coming up in July. Well, here's the thing. She probably said, Christian, Christian Slater, Slater right. hit me on the butt. The, the, the only thing, too, and I, I'd be curious to get your point of view, what does this maybe say to all those women with those legitimate concerns? Not to say that this didn't happen, right? but even if it did, was she in danger? I mean, what about those women who were legitimately trying to call 911? Have you ever called 911 and it was busy? No. <laughs> it happens. Uh, if this happened to me, Christian Slater or just any man USA, at 25 or 52, I would not call the cops. I would probably call him an ass and walk out. The cops, you can't waste their time. There are more serious things going on. The court system, we can't tie it up. It's got to stop somewhere. Also, did she recognize that it was Christian Slater? Because I have to tell you something. If Christian Slater hit me in the behind, and I do pop culture, I would question, is, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Some white boy just hit me in the butt. Go on, you nasty white boy. Look, let me pay for my soda and get out of here. If she, if she did, do you think she thought ka-ching? If she recognized it was Christian Slater, she could have either thought A, ka-ching, or B, let me get a moment of fame. You know what we're thinking now? Kachong. Kachong. Yeah. A current affair tonight. Ah, at 6.30. That's gotcha. good. That's good. <laughs> Fox 5. My boss came into my office, and uh, he basically brushed up against me with his penis. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. So I, I don't know what... How can I... How should I handle that situation? <laughs> the Wendy Williams Experience. WBLS one thousand dollar winner. Hello. Hello. WBLS. Hello, yes, you're calling number ten. Oh my god! Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations for two reasons. First, what's your name? Ah. Uh, oh, Tanika. Tanika. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Where are you calling from, Tanika? I'm calling from Manhattan. Okay, catch your breath, girl. Okay, okay, okay. Now you're calling number ten, so you just picked up one thousand dollars. Okay. And that's the good news. The other good news is that you just made it in because guess what? What? You are the very last winner of our oh $100,000 cash guarantee. <laughs> so you just made it in just before the buzzer went off. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, everybody else, make sure that you continue listening to your radio station All because right. we've got big things planned for the summer. The winning is continuing. Oh Keep listening for our next big giveaway. Okay. All right. In the meantime, Anita, congratulations to you. Tanika. Tanika. <laughs> Wendy, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. What a way to start the weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do with the money? Uh, I'm going shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Well, congratulations, Tanika. And let everybody know the radio station giving away the goods. WBLS. We briefly interrupt to make this special announcement. 107.5 WBLS, the station with the $100,000 cash guarantee, shares the good news. What? We told you we were going to do it, and we did. We've officially given away $100,000 cash. $100,000 Now, the better news is, during our spring cleaning, we found quite a few more G's lying around. And before the people in our accounting department try to spend it on something else, we want to pass the cash on to you. When it seems 
other stations have run out of money. The thousand other winning guarantee continues on WBLS. Each weekday morning at 7.20, then again at 12.20 and 5.20 p.m. Keep listening and keep winning to the station that's already shared the hundred thousand dollars we promised. And now, guaranteeing thousands more. 107.5. Still going. WBLS. Taking it back, baby. Taking it back. Old school short shot. Yes. The rhythm, the ripple. Two, three. A little play from back in the day. And me, it's Wendy Man. Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams experience. 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 I mean, I think that Nick Cannon and Christina Milian, they do make a cute couple. They do. It's just that um, I guess we as a society look at, um, you know, young women like they're so much more mature than men, which in most cases they are. But because of that maturity, the young woman is supposed to be dating. Um, You know, if she's 22, she's supposed to be dating. Uh, You know, like in Christina's case, she's 23. And I look at her as she's supposed to be dating a 33-year-old. I'm guilty of it, too. When in actuality, Nick is 24 and should be perfectly suitable. But she's Hollywood 23. And so, therefore, that is way more mature than a 24-year-old. And maybe it's just that Nick Cannon is so boyish looking himself. I mean, he's not like one of those hard-living 24s like Game, you know. Game is one of them hard living, you know, or like Biggie was, you know, when he was 24. Just hard living. I mean... Yeah, and the Nickelodeon thing doesn't help. But um, I'm looking for big things from both of them in 06. And so I like them as a as like an up-and-coming Hollywood couple. Anyway, everybody. Um, oh, by the way, Angelina Jolie is supposed to be on the Today Show uh, one day next week. I never watch the Today Show, but I'll be watching next week. I mean, I, sometimes I do, actually. When they have good interviews and performances. I like that. You know what I forgot to tell you guys? I forgot to tell you guys the results of the poll question and give you the new one. Yesterday's poll question from the Wendy Williams um, Experience website was, if you knew the spouse of your boss was cheating, would you tell your boss? 2% of people said yes, 98% of the people said no. Yeah, because what's that going to get you? You know, except more involved in his mess of a life. But here's the new question. Now, you know, yesterday we had the doctor come in to talk about herpes. And we had her come in to talk about herpes. Um, and she talked about other STDs, but primarily herpes. Um, based on just the recent amount of letters that I've been getting from people who have just been diagnosed and don't know how to tell their new person or have been living with it and don't know how to tell the next person or um, people with questions about STDs. So... The question on the Wendy Williams Experience dot com website, if you choose to go and, and participate, is would you continue to date someone if they told you they had herpes? And the dot 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 is and you're clean. You're clean. The new guy or the new girl has herpes. Would you continue to date that person? You can go on the website, uh, click and look for the question and then um, just answer. We always try to keep the questions yes or no. So Carlos Watson, the political analyst on CNN, um, he was our bachelor and he happens to be in the Ebony Magazine Bachelor of the Year issue, which is out right now for June. And he also was one of People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People in the World in 2004. And Carlos is a friend to the show. And um, we had this uh, this little bachelor thing going on with him, which I'm glad to say uh, today we, we paired him up with a bachelorette. But before I... Um, thank her and whatnot. I also want to thank Ebony Magazine for coming in and, and participating and taking pictures and stuff and we forged a relationship with them so that's great. Um, now, there were three finalists. One of them was not able to get off work today believe it or not. 
So she missed out. So now Carlos only had to choose between two women. And one was Dr. Robin, who happens to be an OBGYN, right? Yes. She's an OBGYN. Um, and the other one was a fabulous woman. In um, She's an executive in the shoe business. And her name is uh, Soraya. And we had them, you know, all the three of them sitting in the office in the back, kind of getting to know each other better and stuff. And Carlos came in and let us know which one he picked. He picked Soraya. So they're going out on a date tonight. Carlos, as a matter of fact, is on TV right now as we speak on CNN, um, participating in, um, oh, gosh, I forget the name of the show, obviously, because I'm working at this particular time, I don't see. But, um, and, and she is across the street from the CNN building having champagne at the Hudson, um, and then when he gets off, he's going to meet her over there. And then they're going to go out and they're going to have their date tonight. So congratulations. Um, now, by the way, you know, Kylie Minogue, that singer, when she did go in the hospital to get her surgery for breast cancer, do you realize that they removed all of the heart patients, elderly ones, from all their beds on that floor so that she could have the entire ward to herself to get her surgery last month? Which I didn't realize that. The doctors and the patients were angered by Kylie Minogue. Um, eight of the 18 cardiac rooms were given to Kylie. So, okay, it wasn't all the patients on the floor, but eight of the 18. And people had to, uh, you know, go to other floors. And as you know, she's 36. And, you know, she drew international media attention when um, um, her family actually brought a lot of this on because they... You know, made a big hoopla, um, trying to keep the reporters and the cameras at arm's length. And, and it was just stressful for the hospital. And several people were um, severely inconvenienced over it and so on and so forth. Not cool. So what else? Oh, you know what? I promised you guys yesterday that I was going to tell you about most staff. And basically, I was just going to let you know. You know, he's always up to something good. You didn't think I was going to tell you that he's landed his 12th baby's mother, did, did you? No, it's not in his character. That I know of. Of course, I'm free for information at 866-GET-WENDY. He's, he's clean as the Board of Health, though. So whenever you hear me say I'm going to talk about most deaf, it's usually generally going to be something uh, very uplifting. Now, there's the 8th Annual um, Black August Hip Hop Benefit Concert in New York in August. And I just wanted you to know that um, he is going to be one of the many artists performing for that. I don't know who else is going to be performing for that. I have no idea. But that's an odd. Excuse me, in August. It's that time of year, you know. People are into concerts and street fairs and whatnot. Dear Wendy, I have a dilemma. I met a very nice gentleman in April. We kept in contact via the telephone. About a week ago, we started dating. This past Memorial Day weekend, we kicked it off and spent the whole weekend together between his place and my place. Now, since Tuesday, I've been calling him and text messaging him, and he, he hasn't answered either. I'm rather surprised. I said to myself that on Thursday, meaning yesterday, I was, wasn't going to call him anymore because if he wanted to talk to me, then he could call me. I don't want to seem like a stalker, but I still want to be in contact with him and see what happens. Is he okay? I want to find out if maybe he lost interest. What should I do, Wendy? Um, P.S. I'm 23 and he's 28. He's a very successful businessman and has a lot going on for himself. I think he has great, is great potential for me and no, we have not had sex. I wouldn't call him. And the idea that you spent the whole weekend together and there was no sex. I mean, if he's busy, then a lot of times guys just want to cut to the chase. Doesn't mean that women should bend if you really feel it in your heart like you shouldn't. But I suspect, young lady, that the reason that you didn't have sex is because he didn't put it on you like that. Like, like, pressure you like that? You know, at 23, I'm sorry for thinking that, you know, you might go along with. Just based on your age, you know what I mean? So, I wouldn't call him. Um, my Magic 8 Ball says he's, you're nice and you're cute, but he's not interested in you. And if you keep calling him, you'll be playing yourself out of position. So, I'd fall back and move on. Try to forget about him. If he calls, read him the riot. I ask him what the F went down. What's wrong with him? <laughs> Look, you all have a safe weekend. I love you for listening. And hopefully we'll talk again Monday. Bye-bye. Peace party, people. <laughs> See you later. Because I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete.
Okay. So it's the bonus hour here on the Wendy. I'm sorry. I expect to hear from excuse, excuse me? Turn this mic on. I can't hear. Excuse me? Are you expecting people from Channel 9 News? Oh, yes. <laughs> Is Kathleen Trigg here? Yeah, I'll go get him. Wow. Thanks, Ed. Okay. Thank you. It's the killer. You gotta be nice to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's one person who's gonna turn a gun on everybody in here, that'd be him. He's so nice. It's ridiculous. Ed, yeah. Ed. Kathleen Trigg, her husband, performed a surgery on me earlier today. He's a, he's a doctor. That's who did it. Yes. Oh. I did not know that that was her husband. I just know that that was Dr. Jones. I got him through listening to the WBLS advertisements. Hopefully, you guys use our sponsors. Wait, what am I doing? I'm just supposed to be saying the bonus <laughs> hour. Wait, it hasn't started. The bonus hour is up next on 107.5. And look, the phones are open to 866-GET-WENDY. WBLS. Wendy Williams. You know, the way she dresses, she's a businesswoman. She's very intelligent. But, I mean, are people going to take her seriously? The Wendy Williams Experience. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. Trevor, why do you think that you have to wave your hand around like an air traffic controller? Like, I have no peripheral vision. No, I just point my finger up so you know the mic is live. I know, and you keep it up like, look at me, look at me, look at me. I can see. No, because I, you didn't have your headphones on, so but I was giving I you the see. cue. I was looking for lotion, and the, the camera is about to come in. I always feel like you can see ash and everything. It's bad enough I've got my little breakout. Oh, and it's bad enough that I can't wear headphones because Kathleen Trigg's husband done caught me up. Ears are looking pretty good. In 30 days, I'll get my ears re-pierced. Re Girls, do you have um, uh, holes too big and you can't wear good earrings anymore? <laughs> Average price for something like this is between 600 and 1000 bucks, depending on the surgeon you go to. And I got to tell you, they don't cut the hole and retighten. They leave the hole as is, they numb the area, and then they put some stitches in it, and you're awake the whole time. We were talking about everything, me and the doctor and his office staff and stuff. And, next, and it took like an hour. Next thing you know, they say, okay, sit up. And they hold you, you know, like you're going to fall over, collapse, like you've been all passed out. And I was like, I feel fine. I left the doctor's office, I went to get my colonic, and then I went shopping and then came here to the radio. The only beat that I'm missing is that I don't have on my headphones, so I can't hear if Art's doing any sound effects on my ass. <laughs> Earlier when we had our date, dating people in here, I tried to sneak and, you know, put the headphones on over my hair after disinfecting the, the whole, you know, entire area. And when I took the headphones on, I had a little drippy drip coming from my right ear. So I said, okay, I won't try that. But I'm not in any pain. I feel great. So what's good, everybody? Oh, you know what? Uh, Brooke Shields is finally uh, talking out about Tom Cruise. Here's her quote. Because remember, Tom Cruise got on Oprah and criticized her for taking antidepressants after she uh, had her baby. You know, she had a, a nice little touch of that postpartum depression. And Tom sat there all pompous and judgmental on Oprah saying that she's irresponsible for doing that. Like he knows what it's like, what a woman feels like after she has a baby from her womb. I don't know whether he shoots blanks or what, but all roads would indicate gas since Nicole Kidman said she can't wait to have a, a, a physical baby. So what do you think the kind of dart that is? That means that Tom shoots blanks and that's why they adopted the kids. What was that? Like, I mean, it's it's hard. <laughs> I didn't hear. Would you just shoot the gun, yeah. <laughs> Doctor Jones? I'm gonna have to put my headphones on my ear, but I promise they're not hurting anything. He um, this is what she says back to Tom. She says Tom should stick to saving the world from aliens and let women who are experiencing postpartum depression decide what treatment options are best for them. 
That was corny. That's a corny comeback, Brooke. It's very corny. Save the world from aliens? What movies is she talking about? Mission Impossible. Star Wars? Exactly. I can't even think of an alien movie that he did. The new one coming out. The the, War of the Worlds? Oh. oh, War of the Worlds. So she gave him a plug for his new movie. You know what, Brooke? That comeback was so Princeton. Put that where? Back there. She should have said, you need to tell Miss Tom if he knew what it was like living with a woman who had a baby to see postpartum that maybe he can talk. <laughs> How you doing? All right. And then she should have snapped, turned on her heels and walked off. Switching. And then she should have snapped and turned around and come back and said, Oh, I have one more thing to say about Miss Tom. <laughs> you could think you're fooling everybody with that fake relationship with Katie Holmes with the bumps above her lips. <laughs> but you ain't fooling me, Miss Honey. All right. And I'm out. And then hey. twisted and then hey. left. Hey. And she should have called him little man the whole time. Forget Miss Honey. She should have called him, listen, little man. Nothing hurts a man's feelings more than for him to be short and you call him little man. Oh. Yeah, that's what I use that one. Let me tell you something now, little man. You know what I mean? It hurts the men. Because their, their only comeback is to call you Big Mama. And then, you know, you say, that's right. You, you take a deep breath so then you're even bigger. And you put your hands on your hips and you be like, that's right, I'm Big Mama. You know what I'm saying, little man? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because when you call a man little man, there's, there's nothing he could say. <laughs> you little petite, exactly. <laughs> Let me tell you something now, petite baton. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Let's bring Giovanna's in the other room. Giov um, Giovanna Deerpick. Is that how you say your last name? So Giovanna is new on the UPN 9 News. And you know how we are. We're so protective of our news. And I like Giovanna. And I've said this before this date. Originally, Giovanna, originally I was like, okay, Brenda, Megan, Kathleen, all hands on deck. Giovanna's out for somebody's job. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh with me. It's nervous laughter. There she is. <laughs> but you know what? I like Giovanna. I like the UPN 9 News team. So Giovanna's in. Come on in, you guys. We can set up. I'm going to be on the UPN 9 News tonight, but I figure I can till, kill two birds with one stone yeah. and just do the bonus hour here while talking. First, we should probably go to the telephone. Hello? Hi, Wendy. How Hi. are you? This is Aquanetta. How are you? Hi, Aquanetta. How are you? Fine, well, thank you. Good. I called you maybe about like a, about four weeks ago. I was telling you about I was giving the um, Baltimore Harbor Crack Fest to the one that you was hosting. <laughs> you were doing a bus or something from Newark, right? Right. The, the For, Baltimore Harbor Crack Fest, the one that you hosting? Yeah, on August 6th. Right. Thank you so much for the information with Rose Toys or whatever because it's st it started snowballing and I want to say thank you so much and okay. that I love you and keep up the good work, girl. And we're going to have a good time on <laughs> August 6th, uh, apparently. I know. It started out to be just the three bus or whatever, but once you started talking about it or whatever, my cell phone has been blowing up and I just want to say thank you so much. Terrific, Aquanetta. Well, thank you for calling. Thanks so you. Have a good weekend. Behave yourself. I will. Take care. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, because you could go to Rose Tours, um, rosetours.com, and that's August 6th, and Aquanet has got buses leaving from Newark. Hello? Hi, Wendy. It's Chris from Jersey. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm doing fine. I love your show. Thank you. And I just want to ask, why don't we get the bonus hour in Philly? Well, you know, because then we'll be cutting into an hour of the Hot Boys show. Oh. And, you know, and that would be, that's the way it is in all the other markets. You know, I love doing the fifth hour. But I love it. For you a keep lot me of, company on the drive home. Yeah, a lot of the program directors, you know, around the country, their night shows start right after I get off. And so, or in the case of um, in L.A., you know, their morning show starts after I get off. Right. So, um, you know, I okay. mean, it, it interferes with everybody else's local programming. 
Just want to ask, but keep doing a good job. You're doing a wonderful job. Take care. Have a fabulous weekend. You too. Bye bye. Yeah, she must work in the New York tri-state area. And then halfway down the turnpike, she starts to get get power ninety nine. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Am good. I going to be in the air? Yeah, you're on now. Okay, then I'm not going to say it. I had a little tidbit, but I'm not going to say it on the air. Why? Nobody knows your voice. I don't even know who you are. Love you. Come on. Have a good one. Damn you. My sister just got back from Paris. She waited a whole year and she missed you and just got off the plane and said, where's Wendy? Oh, wow. Thank <laughs> her. Love you. We both love you. Thank you. Bye, Wendy. Bye-bye. Damn, she was going to tell me something good. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi, Wendy. Just want to tell you I love your show. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. All right. Have a great weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good. good. I have a question. I don't see Art's picture on the website. I think you took it down. Everybody's been saying that. Art, did you take your picture off the website? Well, then why don't they see it? You got to keep clicking. I got to keep clicking? Uh, or something. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. Uh, hello. Oh, good afternoon, Wendy. It's uh, Alan from Long Island. How are you? Hi, Alan. Um, listen, um, last week on, um, I believe it was one of your advice hours, uh -huh. um, there was a woman who said who she worked in Jersey. She came home and saw her husband, her daughter. Yeah. There was a recap that I just had to go. I missed the recap, and the daughter had facts and what happened. Yeah, the recap was that the, the, the um, wait, turn your radio down. I'm sorry, my bad. It's okay. The recap was that the mother confronted the daughter and her husband, you know, the mother's husband. Right. And um, she asked them for a threesome. Oh, shut up. And, the, and, the, and her husband and her daughter looked at each other like, What? And then they got it on. She didn't touch her mother. Her mother didn't touch her. But she was amazed at her 52-year-old mother's sexual proudness in bed. Hey. You know what? That's a little sick to me. I'm sorry. It's, it's extremely sick. It's very sick. And, uh, uh, oh. And the morals, I, no, the both of the answers would have been kicked to the curb as far as I'm concerned. Well, yeah, and then not only that, but the daughter was telling me, and we're going to do the same thing again tonight, you know, the day she faxed me. And uh -huh. she said, but first I'm going to be with her man before she comes home by myself. Oh, this, you know what? Whatever. Yeah. Okay, thanks so much for recapping for me. And you yeah. have a good weekend. You're welcome. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'll take one more. Yeah. Hello? Wendy. Yes? What's going on, girl? Hey. I just want to give you a quick shout out. Okay, shout out to you. Hey, when are you coming down to Vegas? Um, out to Vegas? Yeah, you need to do a show out here like Howard. To the 702? You mean bring the whole um, bring the whole Rat Pack and, and do the show? Yeah, that's it, girl. And have the audience with the tequila and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. You know, um, first I got to get on a station in Vegas. So I, yes, can drum, do. so I can drum up business for the audience. Definitely. Because I shout out to everybody who listens online, but the online audience is not big enough to fill up the auditorium. You know, uh, we right, did right. it from the hard rock. Hey, um, I got a quick question, too. Have you seen, um, well, you remember African Pride hair care products, right? Oh, yes. Uh, have you seen Dr. Miracles? No. Good for the sisters and brothers. Yeah. Yep. My uncle's got it started out there in New York. Oh. I've, so if you yeah. see it, try it out. Dr. Miracles is really good. Okay. Shout it out on the station for me. Well, thank you for calling. No problem keeping you warm in the 702, girl. Bye. Later. All righty, everybody. Um, we're about to go into interview mode for the UPN 9 News tonight. Giovanna Deer Pick is in the studio. She is the girl who, she's from South America. She's Bolivian, actually. All right. And um, the line of questioning has to do with the Harlem Club. Okay, let's begin. Okay. Now, Wendy, the guy who started this said the Harlem Club is a social club for professionals. And he said a gentleman's club gives it a sleazy connotation. What do you call it? Um, a brothel. It's a, it, it, see, it, it, you know what? It almost seems like, um, the, t the type of thing that married men or men who already have significant others do and give it another name and it all seems fine. I mean, look at it this way. They're looking for, um, girls under 35, great physical shape, very pretty. They must have a BS. It, 
there's something really cheesy about the whole club. <laughs> now, what about men or women who say, you know what, it's really hard to meet a professional, and I want to cut through the red tape. Here, everybody knows, you know, what they're after. They want to, you know, find a partner, et cetera. What do you tell them? This is an alternative dating service, let's say. You know what? It is a good idea in terms of an alternative dating service. It is hard to cut through the red tape, particularly if you are um, a professional who's attained a certain amount of success, then your weeks are like 40-hour, 50-hour work weeks, and you don't have a lot of time to meet people. One thing I do have to say about the Harlem Club is everybody who walks in, they already know what it is. Everybody's looking to hook up, so we've cut through the red tape. We don't have to go to clubs to do this, nightclubs, and, and look for each other in grocery stores. We're all here at the Harlem Club. We all know what it is. I suspect a lot of men there will be leaving their wedding rings in the car, though. And a lot of women there will be um, walking in the door, probably agreeing to be a party to a mistress type of situation. I don't like it. I don't like it. There's got to be a better way. Now, he says that he calls it equality and gender and capitalism. And that, you know, if the woman meets the right criteria they have, then she's traditional. She can get in for free. But then again, if let's say you don't meet up to the standards that they have and you're willing to pay, right. he said that they'll accept people even if you're in a wheelchair, you know, as long as you're not a drug dealer or anything like right. that. So what do you think about that? I think this place needs to be shut down. I mean, that's the part that is like really disgusting. You know, they're looking for girls of a certain caliber. And I don't think it's necessarily predicated on your education or your job. I think it's more so based on what you look like. And I dare say if you go to the Harlem Club tonight, you will probably see more girls with the, the, the stripper look than girls with the Wall Street look women who just looked like they walked out of, you know, the courtroom after a hard day or women who are traders on Wall Street, you know? I asked him, you know, how does the woman know what she's getting? Okay, yes, he says there are investment bankers, lawyers, doctors, etc. But I asked, do they conduct criminal background checks? I mean, how do we know that? And he said, no. Well, <laughs> a woman who's smart enough to, I guess, be accepted into the world of the Harlem Club would be smart enough to know how to do her own background check. And, of course, that can start with running the plates of his car or um, finding out where he works and somehow getting his Social Security number. And, you know, there are a bunch of ways that private citizens can conduct background checks. I just don't like that you can go in there and hook up with a 350-pound slob of a sweaty fat man, you know, with a piece of a job and a fabulous education. Because just because you went to MIT does not mean that you have this fabulous job you know you might be an underachiever with your MIT degree but um, but women are expected to be up to par so what would you call the men who go there or who decide to pay to become a member socially retarded what would you call the women who are going there opportunist yeah okay. yeah very good hi Brenda hi Megan hi everybody <laughs> Hey, Kathleen. Hey, Harry. Hi, Mike. We love the UPN 9 news. Thank you, Giovanna. Giovanna, you. it's very nice very to meet nice you. To meet and you. welcome to New York. Thank you so much. You're the number one news choice of our, of our experience here. Thank you. We love the stories you do. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, you guys. So I guess you could watch that footage tonight on UPN 9 news. Yeah. Art, were my eyes popping? Could you see the rash on right up yeah, here? Above my, you can't see it. You can't see it. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> really? Oh my god! <laughs> wow. <laughs> were, were my were my cut up ears exposed? No, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. All right. But the rash. But the rash. <laughs> it's not one thing; it's another. That's what I'm saying exactly, Giovanna. What are you doing? Oh, he's just getting a couple shots. Oh, us. this is what to call the B-roll. That's right. Oh. Is he shooting the back of my head? <laughs> shoot the <rest. laughs> Shoot my ears and shout out to Kathleen's husband. Hey, Dr. Jones. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's go on with it. You know what? I don't want to talk more about the, the Harlem Club because actually, you guys remember um, we talked about this on the show when the Harlem Club was first. Um, you know what I want to do? I want to put up the phone lines for you. How about that? At 866-GET-WENDY and momentarily we'll be taking a break. Not right now. 
Give me about eight minutes. All right, just tuck the number in your bra and then just hold on to it for a moment and then call when we go into the break. And I'm going to take phone calls. And, um... Because I'm interested, and also the news is interested in what you have to say. Now, the big grand opening is tonight. I happen to be sending a few of my well-appointed spy girls over there just to see all what's all going on. And I've told them all, please don't get caught up. <laughs> How embarrassing would that be for us? <laughs> One of my spy girls marries a man from the Harlem Club. But you know what? There's good points and bad points to this. If I was a single woman, though, I wouldn't be a part of it. And I just can't figure out why it is that the picture that they use of the women involved. <sighs> these are women from the club. These I'm not talking about the club. You know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. These are not women. Like, when I think the Harlem Club, I'm thinking that they're looking for people like my big sister, Wanda. Not for the little sister, Wendy. Do <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which is not to discredit these women in the picture or me, but I'm thinking that they're looking for well St. John's knit yeah. would never wear a tight something or another like this right here. What is this easy pickings outfit this girl, the black girl has on? And look at the Asian girl with that cheap over dyed hair and that plastic Louis Vuitton bag. And then look at Miss Honey. Thomas Lopez Pierre. I'm not saying anything, honey, but um, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Easy. All I'm saying is, girls, going to the opening of the Harlem Club tonight. You be careful of what the hell is going on in there. That's it. They say, look, they have to be pretty, in great shape, single, no children be under 35, and ensure fertility. How do you do that? Show them a bloody maxi pad? <laughs> How do you ensure fertility, you lummoxes? <laughs> Meanwhile, this man from Jersey City in the newspaper is talking. He said, we're working hard on our party to socialize. Uh, excuse me, we're working hard and our, um, and our times to party and socialize are very few. As he sips his white Zinfandel. But now, women of color have an opportunity to meet a brother. In the meantime, the Harlem Club was described inside as decorated with brown industrial carpet and hotel lobby furniture. And getting back to his white Zinfandel, I was about to go over with you because the weekend's here and I know many of us want to drink. It says here, men who drink white Zinfandel are gay. <laughs> here it is right here. Let's go over the drink list. Here's your personality. If you drink beer, your personality is low maintenance and you're down to earth. If you drink blender drinks, you're flaky, whiny, annoying, and a pain in the behind. If you drink mixed drinks, you're older, more refined, high maintenance with very picky takes, taste. As a woman, you know exactly what you want. This, this is for women, by the way. If a woman drinks wine, she's conservative. Oh, it doesn't include Zinfandel, just wine. She's conservative, classy, sophisticated, and she likes to giggle. If she drinks white Zinfandel, she's easy, um, thinks she's classy and sophisticated, but actually she has no clue. <laughs> if a woman drinks shots, she likes to hang out with frat boys and get totally drunk and naked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if a woman drinks tequila, which to me is like shots, no explanation required. Everyone knows what happens there. And here's the male category. If he drinks domestic beer, he's poor and wants to get laid. If he drinks imported beer, he likes good beer and wants to get laid. If he drinks wine, he's hoping that the wine will give him the sophisticated image and get him laid. <laughs> if he drinks whiskey, he doesn't give a damn about anything but getting laid. If he drinks tequila... He's thinking he has a chance with the toothless waitress. And if he drinks white Zinfandel, he's gay. He's a homo. He likes guys. <laughs> hey, as long as the news cameras are here, can I, can I get a shot talking about my album? <laughs> sure, turn on the... <laughs> you guys, I got to seize the opportunity. Giovanna's still sitting next to me. Hey, Wendy, talk to us about the compilation CD. Okay, well, first, let me just dig into my handbag where your cameras can get a close-up of... Should I put this down where you can, where you can tilt it up? Okay. This is actually the back, 
And this is going to be the front. It's called Wendy Williams Brings the Heat Volume 1, and it comes out on June 28th. It's a compilation CD, and I'm actually, I'm not talking into your mic, I'm talking into my mic. Hold on, let me start again. Hold on, hold on. Where'd you get the inspiration? You know what, how about we just take, no, we can't take a break, because, we hold on. Um, my album is called Wendy Williams Brings the Heat Volume 1 and the inspiration came because I am a lover of music even though um, I'm more known for the things that come out of my mouth and um, I got a deal with Virgin Records to do a compilation CD I'm really excited about it it took three months to put together and the inspiration comes from um, I guess my crazy natural taste in music I love rap music, so it's only natural that I get some of my favorite rappers on it, like Jada Kiss and M.O.P., Prodigy from Mob Deep, Renegade Fox, and the such. Um, I also love R&B music. So A. Marie has a song on there with Nas. Two of my favorite people, their song is Bangin'. Plus, Jaheem has a song with Jadakiss. Black Rob did a song. There's 17 tracks on the CD, and I think that there's something on it for everyone. Um, it's called Volume 1 because if people do love it, then there will be a Volume 2. And already in my mind, I have my wish list of my other artists. But right now, my main focus is um, getting this out there. And, and in all seriousness, this CD is um, a reflection of my musical tastes because um, there's a song on here by Mario Wine and, and um, I do spoken word on it. It's really inspirational. It's about um, you have the strength to pull yourself up out of any problems that you have, but you've got to find the strength within you. Don't call your mother. Don't call your best friend. You have the strength and you can do it. And then in the middle of the song, I do spoken word. I do 45 seconds of spoken word. I cried so many times in the studio. It took like an hour to get through it. Um, and then the next snapping hip hop. Love that. Mm. You know? So we'll see what happens. June 28th, Wendy Williams brings the heat, volume one, Virgin Records. And the biggest surprise? <sighs> Probably the biggest surprise on the CD is how the retail stores are. Um, open and receptive and people who've already gotten advanced copies of the CD are open and receptive and people are surprised that I just didn't throw something together and put it out there but that's never been my my deal you know I'm a double New York Times bestseller I didn't just you know take a book deal and throw something together and, and put it out there it, it matters this radio show it matters I try not to just throw any crap out there to people you know I've got my um, series of specials on VH1 and they matter you know I, I, I put a lot of um, time and effort into them and so I'm trying to create a brand that people will be interested in for a long time to come and um, I've been in radio for almost 20 years now, thank God, and I've, I've been up and down in my career, and there are people watching and listening right now who've been with me that whole ride, and I am so appreciative of that. So um, I want people to understand that anything that I put my name on will be a quality product as long as they say they like it, I love it, and hopefully I'll be around for a long time. But in the meantime, June 28th. Bump, 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 bump. Do you rap on there at all, or is it, are you, is it just you speaking? See, this is the thing. I'm not a rapper, and I'm not a singer. But I know good rap, and I know good singing. And so I let the artist breathe. I let them do their thing. I'm on the intro. Right in the middle of Mario Winans' song, I do a 45-second spoken word. And at the end of the whole CD, I say thank you, and I love you for listening. That's it. Very good. It is what it is, people. Oh. How you doing? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Oh, my gosh. My whole team was working. You guys cannot believe what was just going on in here. Giovanna, thank you. So, Nicole had the poster. You had that poster up in the background? Yeah. That's good, Nicole. You've been a hustle. Okay. Oh. What am I doing? I was trying to see what any 
viewers or any um, listeners had to say. About the, about the um, Harlem Club? Okay, the UPN 9 News wants to know, and so do we. Your voice will be on the news tonight, okay. 866-GET-WENDY. What do you think about this Harlem Club? Okay, this this whole dating situation with the Harlem Club. Give a call now, and we're all curious because the grand opening is tonight, and and I got my people going, and there are people interested. The big write up is today in the Daily News, and let us know what you think. Um, it's the Wendy Williams Experience on one hundred seven point five WBLS. Marshall. Over 25,000 women of color will unite when 107.5 WBLS presents Circle of Sisters. October 1st and 2nd at the Jacob Javits Convention Center. Over 200 exhibitors showcasing products and services. Technology. Web services. Financial and career planning. Hair and beauty. Fitness and nutrition. Seminars and much, much more. Are you looking for a unique opportunity to market your business, product, or service? Hold the date. Circle of Sisters. October 1st and 2nd at the Jacob Javits Convention Center. Circle of Sisters. Circle of Sisters. An expo uniting today's women of color. Connecting with our community. Our community. With our community. Connecting with our community. With 107.5 WBLS, today's R&B and classic soul. Yo, what up? This is John Legend, and you're listening to The Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBLS. Thank you, John. Hello? Hello. Hi, Wendy. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. I just wanted to call and respond about the Harlem Club thing that you were talking about. Okay. As soon as I heard it, I wrote, wrote it down. That's okay. number one. Number two, I, to, I told my mother about it, and she was like, you need to go. Because as a 24-year-old, educated, no kids, attractive woman, it's been very, very difficult to meet any men who don't have a record, don't have mad kids, don't have, you know, baby's mamas floating her all over. It's just really nice that there's actually a place where you can meet other educated black people and mingle. Oh, you know I, what I'm saying? I appreciate your honesty. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. All right. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Hey, turn your radio all the way down. You gotta be kidding. I, well, go ahead. I got you. No, I thought you were talking about the Harlem Club. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that I got you on the phone, though. Okay, here we are. Well, that was the question. I'm sorry. Woman, have you been following... The oh, okay. Oh, damn you, Art. But thanks. Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. We're talking about the Harlem Club. Yes, I know. Okay. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wendy, it is the most awful thing I've heard. Why is that? Why is that? This is a bunch of pompous men parading themselves around trying to get a woman to fit in a mold for them. Kind of Stepford Wife-esque? I think it's I think it's a little more than Stepford Wife-esque. Mm. They're setting a whole precedent before you can step in. Yeah. The Stepford Wives didn't have to pay if they didn't meet a criteria. Mm. The Stepford Wives were just uh, it, Stepford Wives. If you're not a Stepford Wife, you were outcast. Right. <laughs> There's yeah. no uh, uh, uh as a as a man, as a black male in this society, I I don't. Uh, oh, it's terrible. I just that's that's as much as I can say, Wendy. Well, thank you for calling. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. We'll take more. Hello. Hello, Wendy. Hi. We're talking about the Harlem Club. Yes, I know. I just wanted to make a comment. Go ahead. I wouldn't have a problem. I don't have a problem about with the Harlem Club. The premise itself. But the fact that the brothers decided to be so tacky in the way that they publicize it, it's supposed to be a private, exclusive club. If they wanted members, they wouldn't, they would, it would be like these are professional men who would know each other that would be, you know, by word of mouth and how to get um, members, You're not right. publicize it on a website and hey. tell you the requirements mm -hmm. for the women. That's what I find a, pro a problem with, that, that they would actually claim to be so exclusive, but yet there's a write-up on it in the Daily News. They would just have a, a private club and nobody would know it, and people would be willing to pay just to get in it. it very good point. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll take more. Hello? Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm um, okay. Good. Um, I'm calling in regard to that Harlem Club. Uh-huh. It's the worst idea I've ever heard. 
if we live in a society now where there's no romance, there's no chase, it's just like, I'm too busy to work. I'm at work right now. I don't think anybody works more than I do. Yeah. I work about 16, 18 hours a day. Yeah. Okay? If you live in a society now where you can't stop and breathe and, you know, have time for love, that's terrible. I think that's the worst idea I've ever heard. Good point. Thank you for calling. Okay, no problem. All right. And now a current affair is on and we're missing that. Too much going on. And then we keep the music going because Star Jones' new puppy can't stand her and runs from her every time she shows. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> it runs. <laughs> Well, she got she's talked on the view so many times about not liking animals. And she you you the microphone is in Shakira's eyes. Lower it or raise it, please. The girls are my muse. Um She got the puppy because Al likes dogs. And Star has talked about not liking animals. And the the, the little dog's name is Pinky, because here's a man who what likes dogs, but he gets a little lap dog. Go figure. Hey Al. <laughs> and they say that every time Star runs in the room, it's a pocket-sized little dog. And the little Pinky runs and cries like he's getting ready to go to slaughter or be cooked and eaten or something. Exactly when Star comes in. <laughs> but but Al comes in the room and the dog runs over and licks him with delight and barks and just you know carries on. And Camilla Parker Bowles got a facelift for her new husband. And I do have to say, oh, no, it's not tragic. I'll pass the picture around while I tell you what she got done. She looks like an older version of Deborah Norville. And a, definitely a woman half the age she used to, right? Wow, she came come up. Yes, she definitely came up. Camilla got a facelift to remove the excess fat in her neck. She had the turkey neck. She got Botox injection to smooth out the wrinkles. Silicone injections to firm up her sagging boobs. And probably some implants in there, too. Liposuction removed the bulge in the rolls. Injections of a new chemical that gets rid of cellulite in her legs and eliminates varicose veins. She had her teeth recapped. She redid her hair, and she's sticking to a new low diet. And as and as women go, I gotta say that is the makeover of the year. We still got seven more months left in the year. And in case you were wondering, what Latoya Duckett, Luckett from American um, Destiny's Child, the one that was thrown out, well, one of the many it seems, right? If you're wondering what she's doing, she just landed a role on As the World Turns on CBS. She's got. <laughs> <laughs> Ten episodes. She's gonna play a woman suspected of giving a date rape drug to a man and robbing him. <laughs> Her role begins on June 23rd. Sylvia Brown, you know that long, um, that long nailed um, woman who scares you. Doesn't she scare you when you see her on Montel? Do people still watch Montel? Montel, I'm sorry, but do people still watch you? <laughs> At nine o'clock, I sw I'm over at Regis and Kelly. Because I like to see them go meow. And I like their guests or whatever. Or generally at 9 o'clock, I'm, I'm you know getting in the shower and getting ready to do my thing or whatever. I've already come back from taking the baby to school. You know, I come back. It's 9 o'clock. And I'm not checking for the Montel. Montel's show makes me depressed. His show depresses me. A lot of sickness. <laughs> A lot of sickness. Um... And then when Sylvia Brown, and she seems like she's on there like two or five times a week. She was just there yesterday, you just said, Kira? Oh, I don't, I oh. don't see it. I don't watch Montel. Well, Sylvia Brown's latest predictions, he, and that woman's on point, which is part of the reason why it frightens me and she frightens me. Number one, Sylvia Brown says, stay away from trains. Through her psychic power, she believes the trains are the next big terrorist attraction. And number two, Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick will be the next Hollywood couple getting a divorce. Oh, oh. Well. That's <laughs> Ferris Bueller. Uh, well, he's about to get a divorce, according to Sylvia. Did you guys watch that show last night, Dance with the Stars, with big old Evander Holyfield and all them stars dancing around? I didn't watch either. I got to tell you something. I got something to read to you, and then I just... But first, I just wanted to... This is not a depressing radio show. I try my best not to bring you all down. 
and and I am fully aware of everything going on in society. And and like you, I'm trying my best to navigate my way through life. But I feel as though there's so much depressing stuff going on out there that I'm not big in talking about politics and I'm not big in talking about every child that gets run over by a train, stabbed by their classmate, beaten by their parents, every, you know, I just... Put that where? Back there. Well... In a sense. Yeah. I mean, it's reality, but not for five hours. I don't want it to be reality. I, I want this to be um, escapism. escapism for all of us. But I do have to say, uh, what a bunch of tragedy we're, we're seeing with, you know, young children around the country now. Um, you know, first it was the nine-year-old um, stabbing and killing the 11-year-old over a ball. And then... Of course, there's the girl weeks ago who wilded out on the cops and the and the school administration in Florida. I mean, we can go on and on with these stories. You know, their parents who, you know, I was, oh my God. Then yesterday on the news, the seven-year-old who killed the seven-month-old sibling because he was jealous of the attention that the sibling was getting. Just, you know, where does it end? It doesn't end. The most we can do is just protect our families and the gates around our house and, and kind of look out for one another as a community, even though I know that that's a lost art. Come on, you got to end on something more. I'll beat the net. It's the weekend. <laughs> I am. Listen to this. <laughs> well, this is really somebody else's problem, but it's an advice letter. No, 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 no. Listen, because I have an answer for her. Dear Wendy. I'm a 32-year-old woman, and I've been in a relationship with my boyfriend for the last 15 and a half years. We have a 14-year-old, and we live together. My problem is that I want to get married. Oh, now you want to get married. <laughs> now everybody wants to be wifed. <laughs> Hello? Hello? The problem is that I want to get married and it has never come up from him. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> but my daughter is at the age, remember she's 14, where she's starting to ask a lot of questions. She's grown. Yeah, but this is not the age you start to ask questions. This is kind of the age where you just say, mom and dad, they so crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The kids ask questions now. I mean, like, well, like when they're really young, by 14, they're just like, oh, that's just mom chiefing in the other room, or that's just, you know, that's just dad. No, we don't have the same last name. They're not married, or that's just mom and dad. You know, at this point, they just go in the room and slam the door. They're not asking questions. But anyway, my daughter's at the age where she's asking a lot of questions. She's 14. I feel so used by him, Wendy, because anyone could lay down with you. Anyone can have kids with you, but he has to love you if he makes you his wife, right? Not necessarily. I mean, you know, on one hand, being wifed is overrated because a lot of people are under the illusion that, okay, and now we're going to be happily ever after. You know, you got to go into it understanding that the game hasn't changed. Just the paperwork has stepped up. Okay. And now when you fight, you're fighting for real. And when he's sick, you got life insurance. I mean, <laughs> Wendy, I hate the situation I'm in. And I make it my business if a friend of mine says your husband or your wife, that I correct them and say my baby's daddy or my <laughs> baby's mama. I don't yell. Oh excuse, oh, excuse me. I don't feel you should get that title unless you have the ring. Wendy, I'm a good looking woman with a good black man dream with excuse me. With a good black man's dream shape. I got a little waist and a big booty and lots of men are attracted to me. But I turn them down because of him. I make sure the house is clean. I do all the laundry. I cook. I also work 12 hours a day. Wendy, please tell me what the problem is. You are truly a friend in my head. Thanks, Tony. Tony, don't try to soften me with that friend in my head crap. He's not going to marry you. Why should he marry you? As a matter of fact, really, why should he marry you now? Your 14-year-old is about to go off and be her own woman in four years. 
that's usually when they want to divorce you. You know what I'm saying? They marry you when you're both young, you don't have any kids, they stay with you and, and divorce you somewhere between three three minutes and eighteen years. At the eight you know, when the kid goes off, that's you know he's not gonna marry you, Tony. You've given up everything and you've gotten a beautiful child and that's that. Just think, Tone. In four years, you'll only be thirty six. Young enough to do it all over again the way you want. If the next man will have you, and chances are he will. Because even though you have a child, that's not real baggage because your child is grown out of the house like that. Tony, in four years, you're going to have a second chance at this entire situation all over again. There's something to be said for having your kids who are, you know, really young. And that is that you get a second chance when they're all grown. Hey, Tony, he's not going to marry you. I don't care how clean you keep the house. I don't care how much you do the laundry. The best I can tell you is keep that waist tight and keep that look right. Because in four years, you're going to need that when you're back out on the stroll. He's not going to marry you. When you're back out there doing it. it. 36 years old, please. That's not old. You'll be out there just like this. Ah, ah, yeah. Ooh. Your sister, will pro- I mean, your um, daughter will probably be introducing you to some of her friends. Ah, yeah. All right. And it's either A, that he's not the marrying type, or B, you've never been good enough for him to marry. Log on to WBLS. Excuse me, excuse me. Is it time to go? Oh, gosh, <laughs> not this damn car. I gotta get my muffler fixed. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm gonna go home and um, I'm gonna eat some food. I am off detox. I'm gonna go home and make a fried pork chop. Oh! <laughs> some macaroni and cheese. Oh. I'll make it collard greens <laughs> with ham hock, not turkey. <laughs> not turkey. I'm going to wash it down with a bottle of champagne. And right after the UPN 9 news, I'm out. Right. To the store to pick up a box of Twinkies. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody, um, thank you for being here today. I love you for listening. I hope you understand the dynamics of this show. I just, the world is a depressing place. And if I could just make you smile for a moment... You can call me a crazy fool, whatever. But the point is that you forgot about all the other drama going on in your life, in your neighbor's life. Did you hear about all that cocaine they found in New Jersey? Are you out of your mind? Can you imagine living next door to that mess? Watch your neighbors and don't trust them. You give them a finger wave like I give my, hey, I'm watching you. And we live like Wisteria Lane, but it's just, hey, all right. Mm Mm-hmm. We were so stupid when we lived in South Jersey, you know, and it was like Wisteria Lane there. And I was nesting and, you know, feeling all maternal. And, you know, I got pregnant three different times. And all my entire time in Philly, I spent, you know, being pregnant and nesting, buying stuff for the house, just nesting. Well, I was close enough. I felt in my heart close enough with our neighbors, the Tomasinis. They had keys to our house and they had the code to open our garage door and everything. After I had the baby and snapped back into my senses, I was like, what? I'm not even the type to talk to my neighbors. Much less think about giving a key, having them over for a cup of Folgers, coochie coo with the baby. What happened to you? I lost it for a moment, getting all caught up in the family way. I'm back, though, and I'm hard and black. You finger wave your neighbors because those same neighbors that you live next door, the same ones with $18 million worth of cocaine stashed in the house. Did you see that last night? On the UPN 9 News. That's where it all goes down, Holmes. Oh, I thought you said, what time is it? West New, right up there, right above Rapper's Row. Not Rapper's Row, but, you know, the, the community above, like um, Palisades Park. They were Spanish guys, for what it's worth, and the cocaine was from Colombia. 
And there were two guys living in a house together, which might have been a tip-off. I know that would be a tip-off to me. You know, two grown men living in a house. I want to know you're gay, and your flowers better be beautiful in the spring. Otherwise, there is something else going on. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah. No, these were masculine, like, you know, frito, like bandito. Exactly. Man, listen, let's feel like skipping around the house. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta go. I can just get this. Everybody get in. Get in. <laughs> Close your door, Trevor. Close your door. Close your door. <laughs> <laughs> we get it right. Come on. <laughs> hold on. No, hold on. Give me give me a little ply here just to gear. We hold on. See? There you go. <laughs> Bye everybody. Love you for listening. We'll talk Monday. Vaughn's next to the quiet store on BLS. Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Aw, oh, man! And WBLS music starts next.